Talk on the Championship Hockey Figure. Nine ball the discipline and courtesy as always of AccuStats. I'm Grady Matthews in the booth with Jerry McWhorter. Jerry, you wanted to describe the impending match to our listeners? Well, I tell you what, uh, this has got to be one of the most exciting matches that this tournament's going to present. We've got a couple of real flamboyant, fancy players here. Rodney Morris, who you see the back is racking the balls there, is a player from uh, Hawaii. And uh, 24 year old, young, 24 years old, young, I should say. And uh, a lot of passion, a lot of desire to, to win, and a and, uh, great uh, player. I know you're very familiar with Francisco Bustamante. What uh, is your assessment of the match at this well, point? Well, I think we'll have a great offensively slanted contest here. Both of these players have crushing breaks. They're fearless, eyes like an eagle. They're young, talented, and an asset to any major tournament arena. Well, I'll tell you what. I think in any uh, champion that you look at, I think one of the most important factors is just real passion and drive to win and, and hunger. And both of these players have got that in spades. Now, Bustamante failed to pocket a ball on the opening break. Rodney can see the one ball, and I don't think he'd be well advised to, be, to shoot an offensive shot. I think he needs to play a good common sense safety. We're in Reno, by the way, at the Sands Regency, the 20th edition of the second oldest tournament in the world, to my knowledge. Always a favorite among the players. No kidding, they really do a great job here. Uh, a knowledgeable, uh, very appreciative audience, and this should be a thrilling contest. Rodney, of course, a protege of Hawaiian Brian, who a lot of folks on the mainland never heard of. Brian is one of the best nine ball players that ever lived. Well, what a great safety. Look at this safety, Jerry. Yeah, uh, that's... Uh <laughs> Uh, this played off a good speed control there. Snugging that ball up real tightly against the five ball is of critical importance in playing a safety like that. Uh, one of the things that you learn among this upper level of pool of just getting the hook isn't good enough in many what, cases. What a great shot Francisco made. Now he hit that at exactly the proper speed to give himself a chance to get distance between the cue ball and the object ball and barring that, a nice little safety. Very fortunate with that little roll. Well, he made a good hit. It pays to hit him. And I might add, uh, if you're statistically minded, that these top players, the real good safety and kick, kick players, hit about 95% of their kick shots. Now, again, Rodney has a shot that, that oh, it's, it, it's awkward to say the least. He doesn't want to hit the far side of the one. He's got a good chance to scratch. And again, he has to hit this with a, a little pace, give himself a chance to get safe or perhaps pocket the one ball. I wouldn't use much English here. I like the way he did that. And why would you miss it short if you're going to miss it? Because in that fashion, you have a chance to hit it coming back. If you miss it long, you might might scratch, and also you have no chance to, to hit it hitting more than one rail. Well, he missed that sufficiently short. It seemed like uh, he, he might have intended to hit it two rails right. uh, to come behind the, the one ball. Okay, Francisco's in pretty good shape here. He wants to just draw back for the three ball. Now, this is a little awkward, but certainly tenable. He'll go two rails around the five ball. And I suspect he'll lean his body across the table. Nice reach Francisco has, too. All of these Philippine players uh, have learned to uh, stretch very well. Now he might have a little problem because it, it looks like it's going to be difficult to miss the eight ball. Well, he's come up short on his position there. Well, if I see the angle correctly, Jerry, if he can hit the right side of the eight ball as we view it on the monitor, I think he can use uh, perhaps a touch of left English, planning to go off the inside of the eight right. to the end rail and then back up the table. Oh, he went around it. But that wasn't an easy shot. I think what he did is something I'm guilty of a lot of times. He he struck the four ball in such a way that the cue ball had to go around the eight, but in that fashion, he missed the ball. Much more concentration on the line of the cue balls traveling rather than making sure that he pockets the, right. the object ball. Because it looked to me like he didn't stay down on the ball real well. 
Now Rodney must be exactly straight in here. But these it pockets... Looks like he's got a little bit of an angle, but he certainly would have to, to uh, jam it in the hole in order to get the cue ball to the long rail and back out. These pockets are very forgiving. Even from this distance, he can cheat it a little bit or catch the outside of the six, like so. That was a, that was a very good choice. It allowed him to smooth stroke the ball and uh, go through it, just drawing the ball straight back and get a natural little carom off of the six ball rather than having to stuff it in the hole. Well, here's a matter of individual choice. I kind of like going through rails here so that you move the cue ball off of the rail. Now he's a little straighter. Yeah, than the only risk be. there is to see to it you don't get too straight in. Well, I wouldn't have minded being four or five inches higher. Now he's going to use just above center ball, left English. Nicely done. And he's going to lag the eight ball in the pocket. And he'd be happy to come a foot or so off the table. And being left handed, he won't have any trouble reaching this. And without much further ado than that, it's going to be one game to nothing advantage Rodney Morris. <laughs> and this is going to be our first look at Rodney's break. Now Rodney also, when he comes to the United States and he goes on the East Coast, he runs around with Tony Catucci. Now a lot of folks don't like Tony. I love Tony because every time he gambles, there's a $10,000 or more decision. Uh, but anyway, he's kind of abrasive in the matching up process. In fact, he has a wooden leg also, and some of the folks on the East Coast are praying for that leg to rot off. But <laughs> I never did feel that way. I always liked being around Tony. Well, Rodney's not shy when it comes to breaking the balls. No, that's sure not. Look at how nicely these young men are attired, too. Certainly a credit to the sport. We spoke earlier, though, at, at some length about the almost antiseptic clinical nature that the tour seems to have taken. I mean, nobody laughs and has any fun anymore. It's almost like uh, they're playing for dinner money. <laughs> I'm kind of saddened by it, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder if this is a sign of things to come. Oh, he did pocket one ball on the break, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's hooked behind the five ball, and he's got the nine ball very close to well, the corner pocket. If he can see the right here. edge of the one, the shot I like is, is thinning the one, knocking it over to the far left side rail, back to the end rail, and the cue ball back into the nine. He might right. make the nine ball. He, he, I don't think he can see enough of the one ball. He's got to either push out, you got to push out from here. Uh, yeah, but the shot you were looking at, if he did have enough on it, it's a natural safety. Um, just playing the one ball with a half speed to get to the middle of the table. And and uh, well, it looks like he's electing to jump his ball here. Yeah, I, you, That's a great uh, shot. Yeah, you've, you've got you've to gotta elevate your cue and, and uh, shoot the jump shot from from there, I think. It's, uh, it's really become a relatively easy shot. Well, what do you think of that new rule uh, in that a player can only jump balls with his playing field? I'm 100% I'm for it. He's stuck himself in another position here where uh, a jump cue would be easily to be pulled out of your bag and, and uh, make a very easy jump uh, jump shot. I, I'm all for uh, jumping with your with your uh, playing cue. I, I I make cues for a living. That's what I do. And and uh, I'm I suppose it's stomping on some people's feet in the sense that. Uh, Making jump cues is a good marketer of cue making. I, it's not something that I've ever done. Well, the only thing I disagree with is that they should have made it illegal to begin with before allowing people to put a, you know, a pretty sizable investment on the line. Right. <laughs> well, it's a lot of people believe that it's, uh, um, that's the fact that it's something new and that's it exciting and that the spectators like to see it and it's uh, it adds color to the game. Uh, I think is the biggest argument, is that it's progressive. Now look um, what he did here. Has he got room to go over on the far side of the six? If not, he's got to come between the six and nine with the cue ball. I think he can just come out one rail here. Yeah. Like so. Okay, nice Even shot. if he would have thinned the six, he probably would have got a good lie. Well, you know, I've always been a big stickler about having respectable rules. And one thing that always bothered me about one pocket... The BCA, to my knowledge, doesn't have a member on their board ever played a game of it, and they came up with one pocket rules. I'd like a guy to make the rules to be somebody who has to cut in a long, hard nine ball to pay his rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, no special problem with this eight and nine, Jerry. 
business as usual. Yeah, and these guys are both quickly placed uh, contestants, too. I mean, uh, this is not going to be a slow match. All right, we're knotted up at one game apiece as we speak. And why don't we take a moment and mention that if somebody wants to order one of your great cues, they have only to call 818-352-0304. That'll do it. You might consider adding an 800 number like Harry Plattis, my friend in Seattle, has done just for the pool players to call up and borrow money. <laughs> Surprised Harry's not here. He usually comes to Reno. Probably got bigger fish to fry. Well, that could be. And lawyer talk, I don't know what that amounts to. All right, here we go. Now, Francisco didn't make a ball. That's one of the rare times that you'll witness that. He took some of the force off of it. We may see him him harder, which he did. Look at that. He stopped the cue ball yeah. exactly in the middle of the table. Got kind of a bum roll. The one yeah. ball doubled out of the pocket. The seven ball kicked him down the table, kicked the cue ball down the table a little bit. Yeah, he seemed like he is actually breaking the balls a little more control. He might have a Samson condition going. He, you know uh, what I like here. Trimmed his hair substantially uh, there and had lost a little power. This is a give or take situation anyway. Why not push the cue ball forward like two inches and give your opponent the chance to do something ignorant? He might. I wouldn't shoot it from here. Uh, oh, look well. at that. <laughs> you know how hard that shot is to make with inside English. Am I losing my marbles or what? <laughs> <laughs> you could give me the rest of my life. I could sli slice that in with inside. Well, English. I think there's a difference between what shot selections uh, he thinks are certainly uh, reasonable and what yeah, you and I think are. Let's get real there. You know, that that is incredibly difficult. Well, it's a great shot. That's all there is to it. Now, he'll come up one natural rail here. Was that the pushing out to letting your opponent do something ignorant? Was that the ignorant shot well, that uh, you were hoping your incoming player would do? Maybe he thought Rodney would do that to him. Boy, I like that to it. And, and if I had to pick one area where the players from the Philippine Islands happen to excel, it would be with the oh, the, the awkward use of inside English. They're, they're exceptional with the inside English. Well, Grady, these tapes are so often used, and rightfully so, as, an inst as a instructional aids, and to really see the greatest players in the world and, and uh, what they do to make it work. And you watch Francisco play uh, Bustamante, and with the way he aligns up on the ball and certain things he's doing, boy, as an instructor, how do you uh, justify that? Well, I can tell you this much. It's two to one Bustamante at the moment. And he just made a backer out of me with that. I mean, if he wants, <laughs> 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 he's looking for a little action or something. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to go far. No. Uh, and he's scrutinizing the rack. That's my only complaint about nine ball as it stands. Uh, I think they should have neutral rackers all the time. Well, what do you think of playing ten ball and, and minimizing the, the strength of the Break. Well, I think it should come to something like that. Nine ball has become too easy for the modern day professional. You're liable to sit down and not even get a chance to come to the table for five, six, seven, eight games sometimes. It's hard to win from that spot. Isn't yes, it? it is. It sure is. Now, that's the break I like. That's the one I've been working on. I, I try to make the cue ball go over to the side rail and kind of back out in the middle of the table. I think it's easier to control. I don't know that he meant to do that. Now, let's see what he does here. Now, if he shoots this in 100 miles an hour, warp speed, if you will, with inside English, uh, I just double my bets as his backer. How about if he just jacks up and draws it to the long rail? No, he's going He's attempt going to that inside English. This is the, un, the uh, unawkward use of it that uh, just make, they make it so easy. That's a nice shot. Now, I... I don't know. I kind of like going off the edge of the three and trying to knock the three down to the end rail and having the cue ball go above the four. Yeah, and over there in the general area of about a half a diamond up from the lower left-hand side pocket. I think he's got to go into the three to, to have any kind of comfortable position play here.
Well, Rodney has a bank, but this is this is not a good bank here. I'm not sure what the right shot is here. The three doesn't pass the six seven, so he can't really comfortably cross the ball. Maybe we can get a close up of that five and six and see uh, a little uh, better. The, the two and the five. There's you a mean? nice shot of it there on the monitor. Or the two and five, rather, excuse me. Oh, what a great shot. He had to shorten that up pretty well. Yeah, it looked like it was easily pocketed. A uh, little inside English there to kill it. But, uh, it was a little straighter. How much future he's got. Well, I think to be successful out here on the tour today, everybody plays the doggone well. You have to be aggressive. You're not going to win bunting. <laughs> I, I think so. Watching Francisco Long Rail bank the... Uh, the two ball with the I might intentions also, of staying at the table and running some racks. I might also add that that mentality works well at marriage. <laughs> You've got to be aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't wear buddy <laughs> duck you can hide it. <laughs> I think oh, this is going to be a fun match. You know, I drive 500 miles to watch a match of this nature. What a great sport we have. And, and there's a lot of signposts that lead me to believe that there's a lot of great things in the future for our industry. Well, you're back there playing nine ball again. You you participated in this tournament. As a matter of fact, I was uh, here in the booth commentating on your uh, your last match, the last match of the event. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't played in any sanctioned events in three years. and I, uh, I mean, that's what I do for a living. I'm a pool player. Now, that's the edge that experience gives you. Now, there's not many places that a grizzled old veteran like me would have an edge, but I play the six ball to go to an exact place in a case like that. And one pocket and straight pool will help you a lot there. Where, what location, where would you have left the six and the cue ball with that shot? Well, what I do is I pretend that the, that the pocket extends farther th than it does, and I wouldn't want the seven ball to go more than like an inch and a half after dropping in the pocket. If it continued on, it was simply slate there. Uh -huh. And in that fashion, the six can't go very far. Look at this. All right, now some folks might consider that a bad roll, not I, because uh, Rodney had an excellent chance to get out and he kind of two-stroked that billiard and, and he's gonna pay for it. Well, Francisco being able to kick that ball on the side, uh, that's, you say people would, would construe that as, as uh, unlucky or as a bad roll. One of the things that's important to remember with their kicking skills is he's able to hit that ball at a half ball spot to where if he doesn't make it in the side, the speed that he's hitting at, he has a strong likelihood of the six ball going straight up table and gluing in the middle of the back rail. Oh, sure. And there's coming a up with a safety. And there's a lot of good things that can happen from there. That's why I, what I mentioned is a few racks ago that uh, safety play in this game has become, especially playing one of the Filipino players has gotten to the point that just hooking your opponent oftentimes is not good enough. You like pool trivia, Jerry? Uh, when I know the answers, when do I you don't, know what, I think that's do you know what? <laughs> do you know what professional leads all the other pros in this very important category? This soon-to-be-mentioned gentleman, his opponents pocket less balls than after one of his safeties than any player on the tour. And it's a guy you would not normally think of you know, in, the, in this light. When he lays down a safety, the incoming player his opponents pockets, pockets less, less, less balls, balls after one of his safeties than any player on the tour. I would say, I'm going to just wager a guess, I would say Buddy. Howard Vickery. Howard Vickery. Yeah. Now, Howard's my friend, right, and has been for a long time. But Howard is a guy, his talent is all man-made. Howard has no natural talent. Right, he's like me, uh, no stroke. <laughs> <laughs> he's balding, <laughs> grizzled. But that being said, but he's added <laughs> a lot to, to pocket billiards. Balding, grizzled, and no natural ability. What well, a winning combination. And been a top uh, touring professional for how many years? Well, he's managed to maintain a wife, which is more than I have. <laughs> Why is it that about every other rack we get back to a, some sort of marriage reference? Because when I do that, I keep it freshly in my mind what a bad deal it is. <laughs> Look at this hit. Look at that shot. Well, I could say the same thing that I, that I did about uh, Francisco a few short moments ago. That's a hard shot. He was frozen on the rail, and he kind of 
force followed this cue ball around three rails. A little unfortunate not to hit the three nine. And now he's got a tough shot. Well, I tell you what, Grady, uh, these straight shooting kids that come out and never miss a ball and just cut them down the rails 90 miles an hour. Uh, the thing that tends to impress me the most is at this, these young ages how much experience uh, they're able to acquire in good choice making, in well, you knowing know why the, proper, the proper way to get out and the, and the highest percentages. Well, why is that? That's because, well, a variety of reasons. Now there's good tapes, leagues, instructions, exhibitions. The room owners and parents are very supportive, even wives. Like my dad hated it that I was a pool player. It got to be a family joke. A friend of mine would call up and say, is Grady home? And my dad says he's at the office, meaning the <laughs> pool room. Right? right. I mean, really, there's a big difference. I mean, when I got broke when I was running the play, I had to borrow a sawbuck to eat. Well, you look across this room, and in a field uh, such as this, you can you can uh, count a lot of fantastic, world-class players, best players that have ever played. This is as good when a you field were 24 as I've years seen. old, how many champions did you run across? Well, more than most people think. More than most people think. <laughs> well, you had a lot of great players uh, back then. Not like today, though. All right, Francisco's got a tough shot here. He might play the bigot on the seven. Oh, he had a combination that was very workable. <coughs> Sometimes you miss see an angle from up here in the booth, too. Yeah. Now, he's going to draw below the eight and back out above the five. No, he didn't have to do that. He had an angle to... Well, I'll rephrase that. I think that's what he should have done. He's all right here, though, after that one ball. Yeah, he. it looked like he'd like to def finesse it in a little bit more, and uh, he had to hit it with a much more accurate speed control to maintain a good angle on the five ball. I think I definitely would have swung out over to the rail more aggressively and certainly left myself a much bigger area for position on that five ball. At any rate, he's in pretty good shape. No special problem here. He can just come out one rail here with a little inside in this, or he can go. That's the right shot. Now he'll draw this back, maybe just past the side, just like so, and save only the pocketing of the nine ball. It's going to be a four to one advantage. Francisco Bustamante. Now, if I failed to uh, ask you at the beginning of the match here, I know you've uh, occasionally made a wager here or there. I didn't get your uh, opinion, your well, prophetic I think opinion of uh, the outcome of this match. Uh, well, I wouldn't do that. I, I stay painfully neutral in, in matches. But uh, <laughs> I will say this, Jerry. I think that a sociable wager is the spice of life. And to be honest with you, there's... Uh, there's nothing I like better than to take a big bankroll and put a rubber band around it and get me a nice lady and play football in the room with her with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't think of uh, much more in life that's more pleasurable. And I always let her win. All right, he didn't pocket a ball on the break. Now, I think that he can make the three ball here. But again, you got to be real careful where the one goes. Yeah, I, I, I think he at the at a at a slow speed, he, the three ball will dribble into the hole there. But where do you strike the well, with the one, and the, where does the one go? He can't hit this very hard. Right. So, uh, how do you control both balls in this position? Well, I think I would roll forward with the with the cue ball here. Either that, or just stop it. That's a nice shot. That's yeah. Right now, this is a very workable rack. The four and five and four, five, nine, excuse me, on the bottom part of the monitor as we view it. Now, it looks to me like he has an angle perhaps to hit the eight here. Uh, he doesn't want to do that. It looks like it's got to hit the high side of the eight, perhaps. He wants to make sure that getting from the four to the five isn't a problem. He, he doesn't want to play the combination. So he's going to elevate the cue and go around the eight. 
Well, he was measuring a line to come into that uh, right-hand rail as we look at the monitor, and it seemed like that five was awfully big. Well, he's pretty fortunate here. Uh, I'm reminded of Buddy Hall. When he practices, he goes to great lengths not to run into balls. There's a lot of bad things can happen. He could easily have been snookered there or scratched. Well, a, a bad thing did happen here. I, can he clear, see enough of the two to pocket it? Yes, I believe he can. Looks like he's got to elevate. This is, From this angle, it's hard to see. He's got to elevate his uh, bridge over the nine ball. Well, I played overcut these. I know that. There's a tendency to hit them too thick. Okay. Now he has a, a pretty much a shoot and stop situation. He wants to be a little below straight in on the five ball anyway. So he can go down table for the six. And I believe that's nearly ideal. If I see the angle correctly, doesn't have to do much of anything with this. Yeah, I thought he had an angle where he could just lag it. Now here, I like coming back two rails rather than just completely roll this if I see the angle correctly. Okay, he could spin it in. Be fine. You were talking about coming straight down Length the table. Ways, uh, yeah. And, and hitting the short rail down here by the nine ball and then coming back up table to right. achieve position on the seven right. rather than having to uh, painfully uh, calculate the speed. Well, what he did here is all right, too, because his cue ball was going towards the ball. Yeah, I think that was from... It is hard to see from the booth here, but I think that was the desirable shot to spin it into the hole and I'll tell come you what, two rails out of the corner. This is not the best angle in the world here. If he hits the thick part of the pocket, he might be able to draw it back just past the side and right down to be straight in on the nine, like, like so. He might have. He's fine. Okay. Almost looked like he struck it too easily for a second. All right, four to two. The gap has narrowed slightly. There's Howard Lubin. He's here every single year to witness these sterling matches. One of our prize spectators. Oh, we have a lot of them. Hubba Hubba is here, too. That's Troy. You'll hear that cry out every now and again. Oh, that's for sure. Oh, he's a neat guy. <coughs> he's a local resident here of Reno, but he gets around quite a bit, too. Comes down to Southern California and plays in several tournaments a year. Well, Rodney did pocket a ball on the break. And he's kind of shaking his head. Now, I, and this is the second time he's done that. I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, to, to make a ball on the break and be able to see the one on forgiving pockets, uh, you're supposed to be able to get on this two ball even, even though uh, you're quite a ways away from it. And I don't think he got there. Uh, looking at the monitor there, looks like he does. But he he's can't left, see he's it. left handed. This is going to be difficult for him to reach. Oh, he is a left handed player. This will be a great stretch if he can reach this. And pocketed and The problem is, it's not natural to get position on a three either. I think he's going to put him behind the eight here. I think it yeah, leaked out a little bit. Well, here, if he has room to miss the three, I don't see any problem here. You just try to bank the two into the nine. Might even have an angle to get the cue ball right over by the five or behind the five. I don't see any bright future in trying to cut the two ball in. See what he does here. Hit it awfully short. Hit it with a one and a half speed. Came up in the middle of the table. Well, he there. didn't use any left English on a cue ball. That shot looked like it required it to me. Put a little left English on a cue ball. To put hold a it up. Right English bit. on a two ball. Because he had to be sure he missed the three. Now Rodney's got a twirlish ball a little bit. But what's good about this? If he hits the high side of the two ball and just hits maybe a fourth of it or less than that. He can actually knock the two ball right back on the end rail. 
Well, he was trying to duck behind the four ball there. Well, he, he didn't get it uh, snugged up quite good enough. He's can, he leaves him at least a three-quarters hit on the two ball. Uh, I don't believe he's got enough to cut the two ball into the right-hand corner. No, no, he can't, he can't cut it in. But he's got a variety of, of options uh, regarding safety. Well, he's, I think he's trying to draw the cue ball right. Okay, that that's a good shot. That's a good shot. Now, this is a, an interesting situation. How do you kick at this one? Well, Very it's hard to kick. see how close the cue ball is to the rail there. Uh, hmm. Well, he can go to the end rail. Well, he's looking like he can go right between the five and three. Well, again, this is another shot pulling out your jump cue. You're just always going to hit this ball. Well, that's academic since they, they made it illegal, but... Certainly he can get through to hit, oh, look at this, he could hit a full ball. Well, he's got a choice here. I think we'll see him bank the two ball. Just hold the cue ball there with sure. a nice angle to the three, and uh, if he makes it, he wins. And doesn't have to sell out if he doesn't make it. Good shot. Well, he's in great position here. He's come up one rail for the four ball, the seven, of course, on the lower end rail. And again, this is a matter of individual preference. There's two or three ways to play this. Getting straight in is the is the wrong place well, he's to be. Okay. He's going to lengthen this out. I think he's going to use it just below center ball left English and let the spin carry it long. He'll play the seven in the pocket where the nine is. That's perfect. I like the way he did that. If he goes a little farther, then he can play position for the seven in the other corner pocket. Have you uh, made any games with Francisco? No. I know you're uh, quite legendary for playing Efren, because Efren is the, the one pocket player. Uh, I don't know that Parika plays a little bit of one pocket, but I don't know that any of the other Filipinos that uh, have played much of the game. Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I love to play and everything, but I've become a little saddened by the, uh, oh, how can I say this, by, by the lack of sporting blood in the current modern-day professional. There's Bob Hunter and Jeanette Lee. I think she's the number one uh, female player in the she's world. She's currently the number one uh, ranked player. And Bob Hunter's a great player. What were you saying? If you're I become saddened by the lack of sporting blood in the modern-day professional. There seems to be a, a near absence of uh, a loose wager on occasion. <laughs> and when I was a young man and I got broke in mid-state Kansas once, this elderly gentleman said to me, Kid, you need to carry some of that stuff referring to money with you. It's not heavy. <laughs> and, and I've tried to do that, so in case somebody asked me to play, I didn't have to look at some... Uh, backer to give me the nod. You know, to me that would be degrading. But we're getting kind of far afield from this great match. That's just me. I'm just sad and I like the days. Like I remember the first time I ever played Marshall Carpenter. We started off 1700 a game and in 45 minutes we're betting 4500 a game. And now <laughs> I'd get blackjacked if I asked to play for that. I mean, the guys in the winner's bracket drink milk and go to bed at 7.30. If they're in the loser's bracket, you can find them in the bar talking about giving some guy the six ball for 20 a game 13 years ago. Well, that's right. Anyway, I'm kind of rabid about that, so let's get back to the <laughs> match at hand. After you lose that second match, it's not the loser's bracket. It becomes the boozer's bracket. So. Yeah. I should write a book and entitle it Saturday Morning in the Losers Bracket. I know all about it. <laughs> I don't think he's happy with the angle he has here. He's looking at his three-ball three combination here from the 4-5-8 as a possible option. I think he's going to draw this with some left English. And a lot of spin. Oh, no, all right. He just kind of hit it... Uh, 
I think he could have gotten quite a bit closer the position that he's before. got here. I mean, uh, this is uh, this is a very difficult shot. Well, I, I figure him to make it. Well, he's going to draw over to the side rail and back underneath the 8-5. Looks he like he's going to take a little bit of the 5, no? And miss the ball. Well, he's pretty fortunate. I think he's going to have a snooker here. Anyway, while we figure out how Rodney's going to kick at this, I have to admit... No, I think you can see a little bit of it, like a possibility of even cutting it in the left-hand pocket if it does have a... So anyway, as a I met a lady that, I, that my romantic life is looking up. I took a grapefruit and a nine ball and I said, what is this? And I pointed at the nine ball and she said, that's a nine ball. And I said, are you busy tonight? <laughs> so, infinite possibilities. <laughs> well, that's kind of a bum roll. He hit the four on the, uh, what I consider to be uh, the proper side. Just happened to glance off in the side pocket. He has four balls left here, and he just kind of one-stroked that, and he's going to have to draw around the nine, I think. Okay. Well, he can use reverse English, which I like better than trying to go three rails. That's the shot I like. Yeah. Pretty easy to obtain quality position in that fashion. And again, he can do whatever he wants here. He can go one rail, two rails around the nine, which is kind of the shot I like. He's a little farther down the table than he meant to be, but I don't think this will pose any particular threat. That brings the score to six games, Bustamante and two games for Rodney Morris. Well, this equipment's real easy, though, Jerry, and certainly great players are not out of the match. I mean, a three or four game advantage isn't that big a deal. If you get to come to the table, uh, like uh, uh, this tournament, uh, one of my opponents ran five racks. My second opponent hit me with two fours. So, you know, you, you can sure... It's a hard eight. Yeah. Well, that was one of the great nights of my life. Over dinner or a drink some night, I'll tell you about the hard eight that I made once. <laughs> I can't think of much in life I enjoy more than a, uh, a good crap game. Okay, six to two. Francisco preparing to break the balls. Oh, I like that. He killed it in the middle of the table. Grady, which do you think would be more difficult to give up, women or gambling? Well, Say you had to go a year and totally abstain from one or the other. Well, the best thing that could ever happen to me would be if somebody made me give up both of them. <laughs> That'd be the greatest thing ever happened to me. <laughs> now, there would be a success story, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, he's going to take a kick at this, play to hit the bottom side of the one. Okay. Now this is not easy. The one doesn't go in the corner. It does go on the side. But the cue ball is, is close to the rail. And I'm not sure he can lag this in and have a shot. I don't think he, he can do that. I think if he lagged it in, he would bring the cue ball down into a, a zone on the line of the uh, of the nine ball, which would leave him snookered behind the eight. And, the, he and then if he did shot. try to swing all the way over the threes in, a, in an awkward position... You as can't hit this real hard either. That makes the shot much more difficult to pocket. Well, that was an excellent shot selection. I like what he did there a lot. That was a good common sense, high percentage safety. Well, <coughs> he's certainly going to hit the one ball coming from the lower, uh, the short rail down here. Uh, what he's able to do with it from there is... Well, he'll try to leave the cue ball behind the four, or if he hits it a little thinner, perhaps even the six. Exactly. That was his only reasonable choice. Now, here he's got another hard shot. 
Look where he has to hit to, to do any good with this. He can't play the cue ball between the six and the side pocket. That's suicidal. He can't bank the ball as I see it. Maybe he could go uh, below I, I the believe six. He's, I believe he's hooked. Oh, I thought he could hit it. No, well, maybe he can. It's Yeah, I well. Yeah, obviously he could shoot straight at the ball. Maybe he uh didn't have enough of a ball to to not easily avoid that double kiss there. Well, he, he seemed to hit it full in the face and He you know. could have made the ball because he hit the left side of the one and trying to play the safety. Shot. Now he'll probably just slow spin this in. I don't see any reason to go two rails here. Okay, he did, which is fine. Now we may see him play the three in the corner. That way he doesn't have to risk hitting the four or the nine. And he wants to have a little angle on the four anyway. Now here, all he's got to do is pull the cue ball past the side pocket. That's all he cares about. Just to get to the middle of the table. Well, he, he wants to, he'll yeah. go over to the rail, pass the side. Uh, and that's very nicely done. Now he can come straight back or around the eight. I like coming straight back. I don't see any reason to, to risk hitting the eight. Had a perfect angle. Had a nice angle here, too. He can get about where he wants to on the eight. And he'll draw the cue ball over to the right side of the nine ball here. Actually, the middle of the side rail or slightly below it is, is ideal here. He doesn't want to risk scratching or anything. That's fine. And as things stand, Jerry, it could be a long evening for talented young Rodney Morris. <coughs> as he faces a five-game deficit, he's behind seven to two. The uh, momentum of the match actually seems to be running a little bit slow. I've uh, watched a few other matches on this table where more racks were put together and uh, things were running a little bit faster. They find themselves having to play safe and bunt the ball a little well, bit this match. Well, we're back to a, an issue that I raise all the time in that you have to win a good percentage of the safety battles. Rodney hasn't had very many good shots. Now, he's gotten out saved three or four times. All right, now he's got to run out this game and, and start getting his mind set in position to put together two or three or four racks or maybe more. Let's look at the lie of the balls. Well, the one seven is pretty much uh, a given. See if there's any communication problems. Just getting a good shot on the two seems to be the only uh, difficult thing in the rack. He wants to achieve a, a, an angle that uh, will bring him to the three ball easily, and then he's uh, then it's, it's uh, rudimentary from right. there. He didn't have the luxury of being able to play the one into the four, but if he had, it might have been the right way to go because. Uh, uh, see, the five to the six could afford a little problem, right? But if the seven, uh, were still on the table, I believe it would have been easier. That's just perfect. Yeah. He got b just below the two ball there, gave him easily nice natural angled speed to go to the three ball. And, uh, I don't see any difficulties from here. He just wants to achieve uh, a good angle on the five. Just don't let himself, don't get too straight in. He can swing over to the six easily. Well, if the four is off the rail a, a little bit, I kind of like laying the cue ball right on the end rail here. Because, again, that's the only problem he's got is from the five to the six. And given the way these balls are lying, I'm not so sure I wouldn't play to get below the six and shoot it up the long rail. That way you, you, you don't risk catching the five a little thick and maybe scratching across the side. I like what he did there. Well, the way these pockets are accepting the balls, uh, playing the six all the way up the uh, same pocket as the four is, is not at all unreasonable. 
Now see how he got here? This is a little touchy. Okay, he made it look easy, but I tell you, when you're that behind was? seven to two, you can catch the nine and go on the side, or catch the five a little thick and scratch the side straight. Yeah, in. that side pocket is awfully big from that uh, that angle. But of course, when you're 24, things like that are negligible factors. And he's fine. He's got a little angle on the eight, but I, it looks to me like he can just punch the cue ball over. Or he's going to play it in the side. His deliberation around the around the table here being a little more cautious than uh, uh, than I think we would normally see out of his game. Okay, we're going to take a good hard look at Francisco Bustamante's break shot. Oh, look at that cue bend, the the extension, the follow through. <coughs> Boy, what force, huh? And uh, we might also mention, because we've got a lot of uh, new aspiring players that might not know some of the old stats, the fastest recorded break shots, 32 miles an hour by David Howard. I would venture the opinion that, that you'd have to be able to hit the balls at 26 or 27 miles an hour speed to uh, play with the big boys out here on the tour. The score of this match is Rocky Morris three games and Francisco Bustamante seven. Okay, now I believe Rodney has changed sides of the table. Which uh, they killed the cue ball in the middle of the table nicely. Made the nine on the Made break the and the break. uh profited one game and stayed at the table. Well, that's what he wants to see. Well, so that's what he needed to do. Uh, needed to make uh, a good high percentage run out. He did that. Then he stayed down, followed through on the break. He killed the cue ball in the middle of the table, and he was rewarded. No reason to change sides now. In fact, uh, perhaps this could be a shifting of momentum. Who knows? Oh, he got kissed in the side. And the nine ball is nudged right in front of the pocket there with the help of the six. Uh, he, he won one game by the break and lost one game by the break here. Well, I think, Jerry, I might play the one to the nine here. What do you think? Well, you you are a risk taker. So uh, that's what I would expect. All right. Eight to four. Well, I don't know. Call me old-fashioned. Uh, I'd like to see it made where you have to make the nine last. I just don't think a guy should lose a game or a match because a nine happens to end up hanging in the pocket or it goes on the break. I, I've always been a, uh, a believer of the nine does not count on the break. Now, audiences, audiences like it, Jerry. Why? Yeah. Do? Because I th it's just an exciting kind of song. All right, let's look at Francisco's break again. That was a nice slow-mo recap, courtesy of Rick Bowling. Well, he's played the one in the side there. He's got the, drew the cue ball back farther than he wanted to, and kind of bounced off the stack there. Now, here's an area where the Asian and European players have, uh, in my opinion, a distinct advantage over the American players. If he's going to lag this ball, boy, they're incredibly accurate with it. Now, he's not going to do that, of course. He's going to hit it with some speed. Let's see if he stays down on this shot. No, he didn't. Almost got rewarded in an awkward way. Well, it could have been worse. Uh, at least he didn't leave a real easy starting shot to Rod Morris. Lagging, uh, shooting that two ball length of the table there off the end rail, lagging it or uh, jacking up and, and shooting it in forcefully. Uh, that shot to me is strictly a confidence shot. We all can make the ball. We all do make the ball. But getting up and under the pressure situation and confidently shooting it is uh, what it's all about, which I, I, I guess would I'd have to say was the only factor missing in him missing that ball and not staying down on it. Well, here, I think 
Francisco has to take a cut at this ball. No English. And just let the cue ball run around the table. There's now, what are the things that are, that, uh, are under indicating to you he needs to just shoot at it? Well, he doesn't have a good safety. When you have a, a tough safety and a tough shot, you've got to take the shot. Now, his other option is he could bank the two ball. But I sure don't see a feasible safety. I mean, he could play a little bunt safety and try to leave the two behind the three. Like that. Yeah, he was trying to snug up under that six the ball, The problem too. is here, Jerry, is that, in my opinion, he's an underdog here. If Rodney can hit the bottom half, bottom part of the two ball, he's got a great chance to get it, to get it safe. By sending the cue ball down table and leaving... No, do you leave the cue ball up there by those other balls? I mean, sending the, t sending the two ball down table, leaving the cue ball up with the rest of those balls. He's a strong favorite to come up safe. Yeah. Well, he hit it much thinner than he meant to, and he's a little fortunate that the six ball went in. And well, now. one or two of those rolls is what he needs to put himself back into this match with a... Oh, he's not out of this match. With a, a commanding uh, possibilities. He's going to play it in the corner, it would appear. That's a good shot. As you know, uh, the board uh, is electing with bringing it back to a race to 11 opposed to 13. In a race to 11 format, the, ga the score being eight games to four is a dramatic difference. Sure, I don't know why rate. they would do that. Geez, it took years to get them to lengthen it out. I mean, in England, they take a dinner break in the snooker matches. It lasts seven or eight hours sometimes. Playing a short race with great players is... It's almost inhuman. Can you imagine the golfers playing a race, a race to 11 holes, for God's sake? At any rate, uh, he's fine here. He just needs to make the four. And uh, he's got a nice shot on the seven. And he's shooting stop on the eight ball. I don't know where they get some of these ideas they get. Now they're going to go back to 11. Well, hell, you might as well make it three. <laughs> Well, I think you'd have a lot of votes on that, uh, too. Hell, a housewife beat Ronnie Allen once <laughs> in that eight-ball tournament they had in Vegas, right? <laughs> okay. We're going to fourth with be looking at an eight-to-five score. Well, I think the, the uh, intention is to make the scheduling of the matches easier and uh, and not force the spectators to stay in the chair quite well so what's long. There's something wrong with that, too. If they have good prize money in a tournament, I don't care if I play at 6 a.m. or 3 a.m., right? What difference does it make? But to shorten the matches, they're already inhumanly short. I guess it's all about putting butts in the seats. Well, perhaps you're fond of going 4,000 miles to, to uh, and spend your hard-earned money to play an hour. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I, I decided to to uh, make a living. Well, he's got a good shot here. He can shoot the one in here, and it would appear that he's got to hit the seven ball, and that being the case... There's a nice close-up of the cue ball and the one seven. The four ball is the next ball. I think I would hit the seven and, and strike it as thinly as I could and be happy just to, to pull it back oh, out of those 10 or 12 inches. I thought he could draw that. Now, that made it more difficult because he put the seven over there where it kind of is, is a little bit too close to the four. Now he's got the proper angle on the two ball, however. Well, if he can swing under the four ball there, play the, the four comfortably up in the uh, long corner, uh, he can come out easily, and, it, and the five looks like it passes the seven nicely. Well, if the four goes, he's got no particular problem. I'm going to play the five inside, and... He came up a little short on that. Uh, 
he would have much rather been on the other side of the five ball. I guess he was a little straight in, a little now straighter on the four than he wanted to be. He's got plenty of room. He may decide to play in the corner, but I think he can go with inside English like that. Oh, the six. I didn't see the six ball. Yeah, he's got the six down on the short rail here. And now he can just come out one natural rail or go around it. That's fine. I don't think I would have elected to do that. I well, think he's I fine here. He wants an angle on the eight to get on the nine anyway. I think I would have liked just rolling it in and play the seven on the side. Of course, uh, I'm reminded... You know, you watch these great position players like Buddy Hall or Nick Varner. They go to great lengths not to get straight in on the ball like that. I mean, that's sort of the only way you could make it even semi-tough. And he'll probably make the eight, but it, this is missable. This is giving Rodney Morris six games to Francisco's eight. Let me take a minute here and uh, let's recap uh, our statistical analysis from the AccuStat staff. Uh, it, it's so often people get to the end of a match and say, you know, I played good that match, I never missed a ball. Well, in this situation, Francisco has missed three balls, and Rodney has only missed two. But that is, to the, that is the extent of the errors that Francisco's been making. He's made one position error, meaning that he didn't get good enough position on a ball and forced himself to play safe. Or it po possibly could have been one of his missed balls. Whereas Rodney is falling short as he's, he's missed two balls. His kick, he's only made one kicking error. And, uh, Mainly it's been position errors. He's made three position errors, meaning that uh, he failed to get good position on the next ball and either forced himself to miss or to uh, play safe. That's what I think is one of the great things about the AccuStats uh, statistical scorekeeping is you really find out where the weaknesses is in the game and where the match are. Oh, sure. It's a great learning tool. It really is. TPA, to total performance average, Bustamani 918, Morris 830, and that's nicely reflected in the current score. And it looks like we're going to take a little break. Well, that's good because I can ask uh, uh, Pat Fleming if he would consider doing a, a TPA, again, that's total performance average, uh, on my marriage record. Uh, seriously, we're all going to take a break. We'll be back shortly. Well, here we are. Rodney's a little bit fortunate, Jerry, in that he broke the balls, didn't make anything, and did, uh, Francisco cannot see the one ball, and in fact, it's not a very comfortable push-out situation. Hard to realize an advantage against a talented opponent. I think he's got to take this. The only question is how you want to play the safety. He can try to put the cue ball behind the 2-3. He can leave it behind the 7-8, which is a better shot like that. Now, uh, look what uh, Francisco did there. I don't think he gave that the proper amount of thought. He left Rodney a real easy safety. He had a 6-inch area to put the, the cue ball behind. Well, you know what it seemed to me, and one of the things that's real uh, indicative of the, fi of the Filipino players is every time they push out, they're relocating balls. They're moving other moving balls on the table. It looked to me like he was trying to uh, use the three ball to tie the two ball up there on the rail. That was definitely the line he was well, going no towards. Well, that's no good from this situation. Now, he has to hit this easy. He's elevating the cue to lengthen it out, loading it up with left angles, but you have to hit it easy. And he missed by an eighth of an inch. The reason this is no good, because the one is at the same end as the two and three. Mike Massey just gave us a, a, a signal that he missed it uh, oh, a millimeter, perhaps. <coughs> yes, sir. Well, Rodney had a tough shot. He meant to uh, to hit the three and just stick the cue ball. But again, I thought he shot that a little harder than he needed to. He moved the three all the way four feet up the table. He could have moved it three inches and been straight in on the two ball. Now, he's played a decent safety. Now this is a nice safety here. I use the mirror system for this, which I won't bother to explain in detail. But anyway, you try to hit the right side of the two ball after you hit the side rail. You have the five, seven, eight for the cue ball to end up behind. Pat Fleming informed us he might cut it in. 
He was massaying the ball with uh, intentions of cutting it into the pocket. Well, I think he got it safe. Now Rodney's got to be careful here about the scratch in the corner by which he's standing. I mean, if he plays this shot correctly, which I consider to be striking the bottom part of the two ball, he's got a million ways to get this safe. Well, he caught it too thickly. Really, the only way you can mess that shot up is to hit it full in the face. He wanted to send the two ball more to the direction of uh, the side pocket or the middle of this rail to come up safe. Sure. And Francisco's got a great opportunity to put this game on his side of the ledge. Well, he missed a ball there that he's just plain not supposed to miss. Seemed like he got down and uh, just kind of rushed the shot. He's not supposed to miss that ball. No, he's not. Well, you can't catch rail going in. As easy as these pockets are, if you catch rail going in with a little speed, the pocket won't take it. Now, look at this. Rodney's got a chance to pull within one game. He needs to, you know, perhaps take a little bit extra time, make sure he gets out here. The four ball is in near optimum position. Now, what I like doing here, Jerry, is just staying above straight in on the four, and, and he can just go three rails to get on the five. It's the easiest pie. No reason to get cute here. Just punch it out one rail like that, and that's exactly the route he has elected to take. Now, on 90-something percent of your pull shots, you're better off too far and not far enough. Here, if he gets to where he's got to run into the 7 or 8, he could have problems, so he'd be better off to go a little too far. On 90% of the shots, well, you're that's better off a, to go too that's far. That's just a ballpark figure. I've never heard that before. That's interesting. Now, see, he's okay here because he can draw the cue ball back past the side, but if he falls an inch shorter, then he's got a tough shot. Yeah, I can't see, oh, he's below the six ball here. He can go out, kind of float out one rail. Very nicely done, but uh, perhaps a fraction too far. And a little too far, a little deeper angle. Uh, he's got a back cut the seven here, a little inside English, and just come straight across the table. Not a difficult shot, but certainly not uh, a stop shot. Well, every player, if he or she aspires to championship play, has to become uh, accustomed with the proper use of inside English. <coughs> and just like that, this match has tightened considerably. A one game deficit, eight to seven in favor of Francisco Bustamante. Interesting guy too, he's from the Philippine Islands. He makes his home in Germany. There's, There's a shot, a shot of, of Dave Piona. A local player here from uh, Sacramento well, I don't know if I'd Dave Piona. And he just won his match. That match. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call Dave a, well he's local. I mean, if you want to talk about technical geographics, but Dave has been around a lot of years, played a lot of good players. Well, he makes his home in, in uh, Sacramento area, the Bay Area, Sac Sacramento, San Francisco. Uh, I know you've known him for years and years and years, and he's been uh, everywhere in the country. That he has. Okay, Rodney did not pocket a ball on the break. A little surprised at that. This is not an easy... Uh, lie of balls here though he can't use inside English here he's got to come out one rail hit just below the side right about where his bridge hand is here and kind of take what angle he gets now I don't think well I don't I can't see the angle real well he might be able to draw above the seven with some left English and come out between the eight and four ball for position on the three okay he had room to get between those balls that that was not an easy shot. He didn't uh, even hesitate to place the cue ball right between the seven and nine. Not now is the time for him to decide really what he wants to do with the six ball. Does he play the six nine combination or does he play to get position on the six? 
And I, I kind of like playing for the combination here just because you have to get a perfect angle to get from the 6 to the 7. You catch it a little thick, then you could run to the 9. Right, the window of uh, opportunity to get on that 6 ball in the left corner pocket seems very narrow. And look what he did here. This is fine. Now he can draw this with right English or he can go down the table with one rail. I kind of like drawing three rails. Well, not two, three, to just exactly like that. He came uh, maybe three or four inches longer than he meant to, but he's fine. That's because of the new cloth. Now he needs a little left English on this, just above center ball and a slow medium speed. Nine to seven. Kind of interesting, that's twice Rodney failed to pocket a ball on the break. From that side of the table. All right, here's Francisco's break once again. I've come to enjoy watching that particular perpetration. Watch out, there's the nine ball. That's the uh, Ten games second nine seven. on the break we've seen this session. Yes, that's right. One apiece. And for what it's worth, if you like, uh, again, statistical stuff, uh, the professional players average making the nine on the break about one, one every 30 games. Well documented, courtesy of the old AccuStats scorekeeping system which a lot of us miss sorely, I might add. No reason to change the break. It's working very well. Look at that. He's killing the ball in the middle of the table. It's got a nice shot on the two ball. Now here is where I think you take what the table would give you. I think he kind of punches the cue ball over below the five and just off the rail maybe a foot and just accept the cut on the three ball, which is up at the far end of the table. Beautifully done. And now he can just come down to the left side of the four ball. He can go one or two rails here. I kind of like two. I just think it's more natural. But he's fallen short. Now. I liked one rail in that spot to come straight down table. Well, I wouldn't um, put as much inside as he had here, right. quite a bit inside. The only, uh, I guess the downside of coming one rail is that if you tend to favor the left side of the table, the shot you're going to end up with is the cue ball on the rail. Now, he'll hit this easy enough to kind of kill a cue ball just past the five. Exactly like that. What great stretches these, these players from the Philippines have. They've learned to contort that body of course, they're all skinny as rails, too. Now here, all he's really got to do is make the five and not move the six. Oh. Boy, that's well, unexpected. Well, it's not only unexpected. Let's put ourselves in Rodney Morris's shoes. He's got to be delighted to get to come to the table. He was looking at an 11 to seven game deficit now. Uh, he wins this game, and he's right in the thick of it at 10 games to 8. I can't believe Francisco missed that ball. Yeah, well, how do you account for that? Well, he hit it good. It jumped out. Oh, he looked like he just jumped I'm up on the ball to me. Listen to me talk. I've missed a million like that. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he just jumped up on the ball. He had an awkward bridge on the rail there and just wasn't confident and jumped up, didn't stay down on the ball, and hit it with uh, conviction. Well, he may have been beyond the pale, as they say. I think it's a Samson complex. Ever since he cut his hair, things just seem to be a little different. Okay. I kind of like going just, just two rails here for the nine ball. No reason to do anything else. And I tell you, that's an unexpected break for Rodney Morris. Okay, we're going to relook the awesome break shot where Francisco Bustamante pocketed the nine ball. Look at that. That's the classic old time break. 
where the cue ball jumps up in the air and bounces two or three times and kind of squats middle-ish of the table. Rodney asking for a re-rack, which is his prerogative and right. Okay, I think they're going to be satisfactorily arranged momentarily. The uh, having a designated racker, do you think that would eliminate the uh, scrutinizing of the rack by the by the players? Well, I'll tell you the way I look at it. When I go to a tournament, I don't go to rack balls. I go to play pool, and I don't want to have to agonize over this rack and that rack. Even if a guy's not intentionally trying to do anything. I think each player is entitled to the same opening shot. Now, whatever that takes, I don't know what that takes. Let me just say in a very respectful and nice fashion that uh, there have been some inconsistencies in the rack area. As in, how about once in a while I see a rack where the guy didn't get a ball past the side pocket. There's something a little strange. I don't know what causes it. Well, I think going to 10 ball it's an, uh, is a, another thing that uh, that the tightness or the scrutinizing of the rack would be minimized. <coughs> that corner ball doesn't have its possibility of just firing into the pocket. Well, they, they I would be happy to see them do something about that. It seems to me like it takes a lot of the play out of the game. All right, we're ready to go. Ten games to eight, Bustamante. Now, I'm surprised at this. Rodney has, uh, except for making that one nine ball, I don't think he's gotten real good action from that side of the table. He's not thought to change. You know, he's not, he's not hitting them real hard either, and he is a powerful breaker. Well, that's one thing that I think we could all benefit by. I wish that the sport afforded enough funding to where the top players could have a coach. I mean, how brilliant would it be for a coach to say, hey, man, you got, you got to get away from there. The action is no good. All right, he's going to twirl, twist, spin, contort the cue ball with right English and attempt to pocket the one, which he's done. Very important to play in championship pool, too, Jerry, to be able to curve that ball all a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, half inch, uh, when necessity demands it. Boy, a table where the nine ball's going towards that corner sure can be a uh, painful awakening. Yes, it can. <laughs> At 11 games to eight. Uh, Jimmy Wetch just informed me that in Owensboro they broke from the flash mark. I don't even know what the flash mark <laughs> is. Oh, okay. Six inches either side of the spot and the corner ball never went. But there was some talk about like, that. Uh, that would be like the D of a snooker table. Well, years ago, breaking from the center of the table was a much more common, was the, was the break, wasn't it, Grady? Well, not only that, the guys threw the balls together and, and froze everything. All right, Francisco is going to take a bank at this one, I believe. He's a good, aggressive-minded player. Look the speed he hit that with. and uh, By hitting at that type of speed, he might get away with a little bit of a bad hit. The pocket becomes much bigger at that, sure. at that speed, sure. you're saying. Okay, now this is a shoot and stop proposition on the three ball. And the four passes the nine comfortably, I believe. Now again, all he's got to do here pretty much is not get straight in on the five. Doesn't want that. He'd like a, a little angle.
Oh, Great. that's fine because this is ideal. All he has to do is get it past the side. So he won't shoot this too hard. He wants the English to take quickly. Low left English. Nicely done. And again, he can just lag this in the pocket or he can go up and down the table. Nice shot. This puts Francisco on the hill. Twelve games to Rodney's eight. And to go back to what we were talking about a moment ago, uh, a lot of times I get asked what the most racks I ever saw ran was, and I don't know. I've seen a lot of racks ran on, on many different occasions, but in the old days, everybody gave everybody a good rack. And, uh, you know, you could make a ball like almost every time on the break. Now, um, you know, they, it's getting better because the, the organization, the PBTA, has forced a lot of the players to at least rack the ball, make a, uh, you know, make an effort to, to do a good rack. All right, this, without a doubt, is going to be Rodney Morris's last hurrah. Now, he's got a chance to get this game here and narrow the gap, make it 12 to 9. The true odds are 31 to 1, less the break vigorous of him winning this match. So you knock off, oh, about a, roughly a third of it, and you can call this about a 20 to 1 against him winning this match. Okay, the two ball is by the lower left-hand side rail. And he's played ideal position. Three ball is right by the tip of his cue, pretty much. Now all he's got to do is pull it back a few inches. Or he could just stop it. And I think he'll go over on the right side of the five here, perhaps. Or he can just roll this in the pocket like that. That's fine. Now this shot here, though, is... Uh, I think he would use low left English. He got a little more angle, I think, than he would have wanted. Uh, he's perfectly in line on the seven. Except for the fact that he's left-handed. Now, he can reach his body across the table like that, probably reach it. I like what he did there because you don't risk miscuing. Opposed to? Grady opposed to miscuing from what position? Well, if he drew the ball, stretching his body out at that awkward angle, he could possibly oh, miscue. Oh, yeah. Well, he had a little bit of an angle there. Drawing it would have brought him in a funny line going towards the... All right, now we're going to look at Francisco Bustamante's break shot where he scratched. And let's see if we can note any differences between... Well, he jumped the table. Looks like he just mishit the one ball a little bit to the right-hand side. And... Uh, his cue ball always does leave the leave the uh, the rack jump up in the air. He miss hit the one ball and it jumped off onto the floor. And you made a good point, Jerry. He, he um, none of these players try to to cut the one ball that way. See, he hit the one on the wrong side, and because he hit it hard, the cue ball's in the air a little bit. It hits a rounded part of the one ball and it goes right up in the air. Well. You want to talk about your traditional standard tough as nails, this is tough. <laughs> Tougher than Chinese. Well, if he goes rail there. first, he could end up behind the seven. And if he just rolls it in, he's got to play a three ball combination. He can't shoot at a half a pocket, long range. And he's over to four ball. I think I might consider uh, shooting this rail first and at least hitting it hard enough to get you know, around the seven. Well, he's elevating the cue. Oh, he's just going to lag it in. No, no he went real playing first. safe, sending the cue ball down table uh, into this cluster of balls. Boy, you know, <coughs> that three-ball combination doesn't look that bad from this deficit. I, I, I mean, in this spot, don't you got to have to shoot like a lion and 
try to claw your way out of it? The temple? Well, I don't agree with that. I think if you make every shot common sense and intelligent and not low percentages, you can claw your way right back into the match. Now, Francisco's got a great billiard. He just uh, comes off the left side of the two ball as he views it. And according to how the nine sits in relation to the rail, I would use a little left English. Nicely done. And add insult to injury, pocketed the two ball. Well, you know, Rodney had his chances. I think he'd like to replay that match. Uh, to put it another way, I think Francisco availed himself of, of pretty much every opportunity, and he even missed inadvertently a couple of relatively easy shots. Well, it goes to show you that uh, missing balls oftentimes is not the worst thing you can do. Pro playing a proper cue ball and, and get in position, kicking hooks when they when the uh, opportunity presents itself, all those other things tend to add up and to be very important. And those were uh, many of the errors that Rodney found himself making in that match. Are we going to do an interview? Okay, we're not going to have... Well, let's hold on a minute and see if perhaps we can get an interview. We'll know in a moment. And while we're waiting, I'd like to mention that if you want this tape or any of a whole variety of great tapes, good learning tool, the best ever in our industry, you have simply to call 1-800-828-0397. And while you order the tape, feel free to tell Mr. Fleming that uh, they can give me a raise. Just kidding. All right, here's Francisco. We're going to take a minute here and ask a few questions of uh, Francisco and get his opinions on that match. Well, Francisco, we thought you played pretty well. In general, you missed a couple balls you didn't expect to miss. Yeah, but uh, my, my game, I, I don't trust my game in this year because... Uh, I never practice a lot in, uh, in Germany, and uh, it seemed like your pace around the table was is, is slower now, yeah. and you s don't seem to be as sure of what you want to do as uh, as I've seen you playing in the past. You just attribute that to not practicing enough. It's not practicing enough, and then it's not so much tournament. I just uh, I just came in the United States just uh, one or two tournaments. And uh, I never play all the uh, American uh, players because it's hard. They play all uh, good, like uh, Ronnie. He's well, he's we're impressed. Player. You're such a talented player that we can kind of see you getting in stroke. Looks to us like you're playing pretty good. Maybe a yes, couple sir. of small things you could fix. But yes, sir. Just only uh, my break. Uh, my break is, is, is not bad, but... Uh, <laughs> well, you didn't catch the one ball thick yeah. a couple of times but other than that you didn't break badly at all yeah and it looked to us like you didn't hit them as hard as you could either yes sir. is that because you were uh you wanted to make sure you made a good hit on the one and yeah like that uh i just wanna uh, just look the one ball you know because if i miss uh touch the one ball I, my white ball is maybe is jump well, uh, it seemed like you were, you were hitting the one very solid every time. Uh, the cue ball was coming back a little farther than you wanted to, and sometimes you're on the back rail. Yeah. But you seemed like you were hitting it very square. Well, I have two things to say to you, Francisco. From yes. us to you and the whole AccuStats crew, we think that you're one of the greatest champions we've ever seen at nine ball, and you add a lot to pool. We appreciate you coming over to this country to play. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure to, uh, to come in the United States here because... Uh, well, we all love you over here. Okay. The other thing I want to ask you, yes, will sir. you teach me how to make that one ball you cut in with inside English? Man, do you remember that real thin cut you had Beginning on the one? Beginning of the match. Oh, the one ball, sir, uh, be between the I play uh, with the right English? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is, if I miss, uh, my white ball, you know, is uh, coming uh, over here, and the two balls just only this uh, position. Okay. So you, well, felt you, didn't like miss. It was, you felt like it was a fairly safe shot. Yeah. Like a safe shot, but uh, I, if uh, we have a chance to make it, and then it's, uh, it's nice preparation between the two balls. Well, the good news for you, uh, Francisco, is number one, you got past a very fine player, Rodney Morris. Yeah. Number two, the more balls you hit and the more you play, the 
more you're going to get in stroke. So you still have a, are a strong contingent in this tournament. We wish you the best of luck. That oh, we thank do. you very much, and uh, I hope so. We look forward to watching your next match. Thanks for granting us an thank interview. Thank you very much, too, Mr. Mapio and... Uh, McWhorter, Jerry McWhorter. Well, it's our pleasure, believe me. Nice talking to you, Mr. Bye-bye. Well, Jerry, uh, what a quality gentleman he is. Uh, I mean, how could... A great player like him not add class, respectability, and, and, and just remarkable ability to a major tournament arena. Well, uh, I've, I've always been very impressed, certainly, with the play of the Filipino players. And uh, their demeanor and attitude at the table is something we can always learn something from. That's for sure. And for Rodney Morris, well, you know he's 24 years old. Um, this is just one step in a learning process that undoubtedly will vault him to the top of the pool kingdom. He's certainly talented enough to beat anybody. And with these thoughts in mind, I want to thank everybody for watching this championship match and listening to our doggerel. And Jerry, it's been a pleasure working with you. And with that, I think we can bid everybody good evening.